Hello, my name is Dave Hussman. I'm superintendent of the Wilmington and Northern Railroad. And in this video, we're going to discuss how I hand lay a diamond crossing uh, on my uh, layout. Uh, my techniques that I use are good for crossings between 30 and 90 degrees, and either leg can be straight or curved. So let's get to work and build a crossing. I start by laying out the different two different legs. In this case, I've got the uh, two legs here. They're both straight. Uh, if they're curved, you lay the curved one first. I've laid the uh, secondary route first. And then I have made the two uh, guardrails for the that go across the crossing and cleaned out the inside to make sure those rails are nice and clean. I position them in place and check. use the check gauge uh, nubs on the top of the uh, NMRA gauge to position the guardrails relative to the running rails. Uh, I use them, the micro engineering uh, micro spike, so I use a, uh, a pick to uh, punch a little hole before I drive the spike. I find it, uh, bend, I bend a lot fewer spikes doing that. And then I check the other side using the check gauge. And I'll pre-punch the hole and then drive a spike. I now have one of the guardrails set in place. I will position the other guardrail and spike it in place. Once I have both of those guardrails set in place, I now in, in my case I use the picks uh, to hold the guardrails away from the rails uh, just in case the guardrails uh, the cooling solder uh, will kind of suck the uh, guardrail in tighter so I make sure I have the uh, guardrails securely uh, positioned I use some rosin flux uh, intended for electronics and then I use just regular electronics uh, type uh, solder with a uh, typical 25 to 40 watt uh, soldering iron. I fill in the uh, in the guardrails between the guardrail and the running rail uh, where the uh, other rails will cross. Uh, you can fill in the entire rail. I don't in this case didn't do that. I just filled in just where I needed it where the other rails were going to be coming across. Once I have everything glued in place, I use a magic marker to blacken the tops of the guardrails and the running rail. I use a piece of uh, flex track uh, lined up with the ties. There's a little crooked, we'll straighten it out a little bit. And then once I get that positioned, I use a uh, knife or a marker to uh, mark where the other rails are going to cross uh, the first running rail. I then use a Dremel tool with a cutoff wheel and grind out a uh, slot that is basically two uh, rail heads wide uh, through the running rail and the guardrail. I only go down about halfway. Uh, I want to leave about half of the web and the base of the rail uh, intact. We're going to be making a lap joint. Uh, the woodworking term is a lap joint uh, between the uh, two routes, 
this is an iterative process. You take a little, grind a little off, uh, check it, and then uh, grind a little bit more. I'll then check against the uh, running rail using the flex track. Uh, I've positioned another rail next to it just to check and make sure I have the, uh, the right width. And then we just, uh, if it's a little too narrow, we trim it up. Now for the other uh, running rails, I start off with uh, two rails that I have spiked on a scrap piece of, of uh, Homosote. I've cleaned off the inside of the rails where we're going to be soldering. I have uh, there and, and there. I have uh, spiked them to gauge and then once again we will position the guard rails for the other route. Check, Use the check gauge to get them the proper distance and spike them in place. Check the other end to check gauge, and then spike it to the other end of the guardrail in place. Then we'll do the other guardrail, spiking it in place. There's no need to get these uh, guardrails lined up exactly um, because we're going to be uh, removing them from the homosote after we uh, fasten them with solder. Once again, I secure the guardrails to make sure that they don't move towards the stock rail when the solder uh, cools. Add the rosin flux, paste flux. and solder in the guardrails to the running rails. magic marker to blacken the bottoms of the uh, running rails and guard rails. And then I set them upside down in the uh, slots that I have uh, milled out before. I'll then mark where the rail and guard rail cross. Now here I do want to make sure that I set the guardrails in so that the guardrails are even and then make my marks on the other rail to make sure that it's uh, consistent. take the Dremel tool with the cutoff disc and between the marks that I've made I will uh, cut halfway through from the bottom. 
first one rail and then the slot for the other. Once I get the rails uh, cut out, I'll then use a file to dress up the slots and remove any flash or any kind of uh, uh, places where the metal's been deformed by the grinding process. Then I drop it in place to check and make sure that it fits in there properly. Once again, making a lap joint. Get it positioned properly and when it's all cut out I'll then spike it uh, in place. Then it's time to cut out the notches for the other rails. Once I get everything in place, I'll also check with a straight edge to make sure that the tops of the rails are flat all the way across and we don't have anything sticking up that it is all nice and level along both routes. And then spike the second running rail to gauge. Once I get everything in uh, gauge and spiked in place the way I want it, I'll add some rosin flux to the uh, intersections. And then solder the all the rails together. All four quadrants. You can fill in as much as you want on the uh, rails if you want the entire thing filled up or if you just want to do right at the joint. Next, I take the cutoff wheel and then route out using the cutoff wheel uh, flangeways through the crossing. The flangeways on the route uh, that I am for the first track that was laid will be tougher to cut because you're cutting through the nickel silver rail on the rails to, for the second route. 
once I get all of them routed out, I'll use a file to smooth off the tops of the rail, remove any kind of solder that's on the, the top. If there's anything that has bubbled over, I'll either the scrape or file it off. Then I use a piece of hacksaw blade, uh, about a three or four inch piece of hacksaw blade, and use it to remount the flange holes. By holding it at an angle, I can cut the sides along the uh, rails, and by holding vertically, I can cut down deeper and ream it uh, to clear the flange waves of the cars. And also cut on the other route, clean out the flange waves. Once I've got the flange waves reamed out uh, to uh, the correct width, I'll use needle files and clean it up and smooth it all up and make sure there are no burrs. And then, of course, we have to uh, check. We check both gauge and check gauge through all of the rails along the switch, both routes. You can also use the NMRA gauge to check flange depth and flange width to make sure that you've got it reamed out to clear the flange waves. And finally, the acid test. Rolling a truck through the... on both routes. The last steps are to cut the gaps in the uh, crossing routes. Uh, I only did two because uh, it's a, basically a dummy crossing, but you would cut the other two on the other route, dividing it into four quadrants, and then attach a feeder to each of the four quadrants. You probably need some sort of a uh, frog juicer or a uh, auto-reversing circuit to control it or some sort of a toggle switch. I hope this has inspired you to try building your own diamond crossing.